people uh, really don't want to watch just classic TV. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it means that TV is becoming so much more like your job as a TV journalist is, is going to be so much more more diverse than, you know, 20 years ago, right? You, yeah. you have to be able to do all kinds of different things. Yes. That will maybe part of the job description, you know. <laughs> okay, people joining us. I have a quick question um, about okay. breakout sessions. Um, I was thinking of trying to do that today. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Yes. Uh, at what time you're planning to do? And um, I was hoping to do it sort of for the last half hour. Okay. Um, in in groups of well, depending on how many people we have, in groups of five or four. Mm -hmm. um, hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Anna. Hi, Gavin. Uh, um, so about the breakout rooms, I think uh, the host, um, either Olga or someone from her team should uh, give you the rights to do so. Okay. Uh, so I think it should be all, all set. I already let her know anyway. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And Anna, I'm really sorry for yesterday. I couldn't make it. <laughs> so I'm um, for the first time today. Okay. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, how do you Very nice to meet name? you. Pardon? How do you say your first name? Gulnos. Gulnos. Okay, nice to meet you. Where are you calling? Nice to I'm from Tashkent. Okay. Uzbekistan. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, welcome to day two. Thank you. <laughs> so let's see. Um, Gavar, I have a quick question. I'm, I've never actually done breakout groups, so... Um... You would need a help, yes. <laughs> yes, um, Olga, uh, or who is, um, who is under Go Viral Central Asia <laughs> account? Um, can you please uh, let Anna know how to make them? Or can you create yourself? Like, um, who, is, uh, who is under this account? Let me hold on. Uh, let me find out who is there. Рамиль, uh, будет ли возможность создать, помочь в создании отдельных групп для спикера, потому что никто пока не может с этим справиться, да? Правильно, Галхар, насколько я понимаю? Еще раз, то есть разделить людей на сессионные залы, всем добрый день. Да. Да, я могу разделить на сессионные залы, то есть как только она скажет. Да, это будет за полчаса до окончания, получается, общей сессии. Значит... Хорошо. Да, через час. Через час я могу разделить людей. Только надо как-то понять, да, или это будет неважно, кто куда попадет. Ну, да, мне бы, конечно, лучше всего понимать, каких людей в какие залы. Я думаю, что она скажет. Есть подвох. Есть подвох. Я сразу сделаю это разделение. Коллеги, в принципе, мы можем передать Анне права организатора, если Анна нам отдаст права соорганизатора для записи. И если Анна сама знает, по какому принципу ей удобнее делить, то, в принципе, она может делать... Она не умеет, она не умеет делать breakout rooms. Тогда расскажите нам, как поделить, мы поделим. Окей, so they can do it themselves, you just need to let them know with whom you want to... Она здесь кто-то оказалась. Okay. Yes. So, um, yes. The the only problem is that um, Camila, you're gonna be here, right? Um, until the end, or how? Yes, I, I will be here, but if I can help to, I mean, these yes, breakout sessions. You see some of the names here, like Zumrat's name, for example, is written not in Latin; it's written in Cyr Cyrillic. So it will be harder for. Okay. Uh, Anna to identify who is who, you know, and uh, within one hour I have to go. That's why I can't be here too long. So that's why um, 
uh, Camila, we need your help. So, Anna, does it mean how uh, people will be sep uh, separate, uh, go to the breakout room, or it could be randomly? Or we can we can do it randomly assigned. That's absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be. Okay. Um, yeah, if that's okay. easier. Um, and ideally, if it's possible, I'd like to be able to to go into those groups uh, just to check. Yeah. In. Um, okay, we'll do it, people. Okay, great. Ну, она должна тоже туда попадать в эти группы. Она говорит. Рамиль, получается, вы как, она сказала, рандомно потом можно будет сделать в группы, и чтобы она сама тоже попадала в эти группы, вы ее будете этот, ну, сможете, да, перекидывать, если что. Хард, да, я услышал, я сделаю разделение на столько групп, сколько она скажет. Вопрос только в том, что в один момент времени она будет с одной группой. Ну да, она не может одновременно, конечно, существовать. Да, это однозначно будет. Это ваша, это будет ваша, группу, это ваша, просто с этим надо помочь. Окей, ну все тогда. А вы вообще говорите на английском, да, есть? Потому что этот курс у нас полностью ведется на английском языке. Я говорю на английском, но сегодня моя роль технического ассистента-администратора, то есть я присутствую безмолвно. Да, 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 понятно, конечно, спасибо. Основной, основной модератор это Камила. Да, 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 однозначно, понятно. Это чтобы просто понимать. Угу. Вот, все, спасибо. А мне нужно будет э, находиться во второй комнате или как э, нам разделяться или что нам сделать? Мы когда будем разделяться? Сейчас или через час? Сейчас. На сколько комнат? На две. Смотря сколько у нас человек сейчас соберется. Ну, а пока она говорила на две, насколько я поняла. Значит, я сделаю две комнаты. В одну комнату пойдет э, Анна, э, во вторую комнату пойдет Камила. Ну, вот. Потом мы, надеюсь, Анну вытащим из ее комнаты и переместим в другую комнату. Все хорошо тогда. I think we can start soon. Um, I mean... We, we are done, I think, with the technical issues, sorry. Mm -hmm. So now it's all clear. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Gahar. Um, okay, well then, uh, I'll just get, get rolling. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Um, okay, well, welcome everyone to day two um, of the Creative Writing Workshop. I'm glad to see um, a couple of familiar faces, hello, um, and also some new people joining us. Um, so today we're talking about um, something that I've called the art of feedback. Um, and before sort of going any further, I wanted to do a quick sort of check of the people who are here and ask whether any of you are part of a writing group already. No, 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 okay. Um, well, I'd like you to raise your hand if you've ever um, given someone, uh, someone else feedback on their writing. Yes, okay. One hand, okay. Two hands, okay. Um, you mean any type of text? Well, sometimes we give feedback to the emails of other colleagues. Yes, that also works. If that counts, okay. Yeah, yeah me, me too. <laughs> okay. Um, raise your hand if you've ever received feedback on your own writing. Yes, okay, okay. And for those of you who don't have cameras, you can also raise, I saw um, someone, Miriam, you raised your, um, your hand there digitally. So you can also do that if you'd like. Although I would like to also encourage everyone to turn on their cameras because it will help us sort of feel more like humans um, in this, using this strange tool. Um, okay, so, and raise your hand if you've ever um, given a piece of feedback and it didn't go well. 
the other person didn't um, react very well to to your uh, comments. Yeah. Okay. Um, and raise your hand if you've um, ever received feedback that um, you didn't react well to, that um, hurt your feelings, or that maybe blocked you, or um, you know, it didn't it didn't um, end up being very positive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I wanted to start off um, sort of with this quick survey because I think we've all have our sort of intuitive ideas about what it means to, you know, give feedback, to receive feedback. And, um, and we've all sort of been doing it anyway for some time. Um, <clears throat> so before jumping into the nitty gritty, I thought I'd give you, maybe I'd ask you about, um, to take a minute and think about the worst piece of advice you've ever gotten. Just like terrible advice. And um, to drop it into the chat so that we can all sort of have a laugh about it. Um, That's great. I'm seeing a lot of good, of, uh, of good examples here in the chat. Um, I have to agree with Idrin. The worst advice is the one that you don't ask for. I feel like that's very true. Um, there's a word for that in English. You call it unsolicited advice. Um, here, I'll just add in mine. Um, so I have a little cartoon. Um, I'll uh, share with you that sort of illustrates, I think, Igrim's point. Uh, let me just do a little screen share. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> and it's this one, um, which I don't know if people recognize themselves in, in this situation. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of uh, quite funny. Um, it's, so, this is sort of a classic of, of unsolicited advice, right? Um, um, so that was just to sort of kick us off uh, thinking about that. Um, and you know, one thing that comes, with, comes to mind with this cartoon is also timing, right? <laughs> when do you give advice, right? Um, if you're giving advice at a point where it's just too late, then uh, you know you might be better off not saying anything at all, um, and this is uh, relevant for writing because um, obviously there's no point giving feedback on something um, that has already been published, say uh, that is already out there in the world, um, unless the writer is asking you for it. But um, you know, ideally, you want to be giving feedback at a moment when someone is still working on something um, actively. Um, okay. Stop that screen share. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about my relationship to feedback before we sort of get into the nitty gritty of things. Um, so a few years ago, I moved uh, to a town I'd never been in before um, in the middle of the cornfields in um, the American Midwest because um, I wanted to get good feedback. Um, that's how important it was to me at the time. So uh, I, uh, as I think 
Camila um, mentioned when she introduced me uh, yesterday, I was working as a reporter and a journalist for several years in France. And then I had to move to Iowa um, for feedback. Um, and the Iowa Writers Program is, uh, is a two-year program. It's run through the University of Iowa. And um, basically for two years, from 2017 to 2019, I did um, four things. Um, those four things were reading other people's work, uh, commenting on it, writing my own work, and then getting comments on that from other people. Um, and that's, so to give you an idea, um, I read about maybe 15 novels in progress during that time and around maybe like 300 short stories, all written by um, other people who were there at the time. So the underlying assumption of programs like the, the Iowa Writers Workshop, and there are many more of these programs, is this, is that writers learn primarily through feedback. Um, and it's not just getting comments on their own drafts, but also reading other people's drafts um, and articulating how and why they think something's working, how and why they think something's not working. Um, what this means is that you get a lot of feedback. You're, you're you know, swimming in feedback. So just again, to illustrate that, I'm gonna do another, gonna share my screen again. Um, and show you, so sort of, so this is just a screenshot of uh, my own manuscript. Um, it's a novel manuscript, so this is just one paragraph. And what you see here is um, notes from my uh, sort of writing advisor at the time called Harding. And so I'll just read out um, this small section so that, and, and sort of read out the comments so you get an idea. Um, if I can manage, let me just move this, there we go. So to give you a little bit of context, um, this is a novel in which there's a mysterious beast, okay? There's some kind of animal that is killing humans. So, and the person talking is a young girl. First, it was the daughter of the blacksmith from three towns over, gone missing when she took the cow out to feed found several days later in a ditch. They, and here Paul, my instructor says, who? They said her head was missing, her clothes torn off of her body. Then the youngest son of a wealthy mill owner, throat slit open in the bushes, wearing nothing except for his shoe. Here Paul says, one shoe? After that, another girl, my age, Therese told me in that urgent half whisper of hers, that she used in church before the service began. They never found her body, but her brothers say they saw a gray four-legged shape, four shape dragging her into the woods and it laughed at them. And here Paul says, the animal is laughing with the girl in its mouth. Um, so I'm gonna sort of stop there, but just to give you a sense that this is some pretty close um, reading that's happening here, right? And there are 200 pages of this. And um, there are also eight other copies of this novel that eight other people have also given me. So it <laughs> gives you a sense. And then there are also, of course, letters. You receive letters where people explain what they think you're doing well, what they think can be improved. So again, to give you um, a sense, I've collected them. Here, this is a pretty one. Someone is saying, Anna, I'm so into this, which of course is great news. Um, then there are also less positive ones. There's sort of there's someone else here who's giving me a letter and then more and then more. And you accumulate a big stash of this um, over, over time. Um, so the question becomes, what do you do with all this feedback? Um, and, okay. um, and that's something that I hope to talk to you about a little bit today and also tomorrow. Um, but perhaps a good question now is to say, is there so much, is there such a thing as too much feedback? Um, has, is that as something that you've ever encountered? And um, where does this leave us for just today's workshop, right? Um, so maybe this is, I'd like to ask you, you know, what your um, in effective cultures and countries, 
how you think um, people perceive feedback. Like, are there some cultural differences in the way um, people give feedback that you've noticed? I see someone nodding. Oljan, would you like to tell us what you've noticed? Uh, yes, I'm originally from Kazakhstan. So to be honest, I, I never received uh, a clear feedback. Either It was either too positive or too negative. So nothing like sandwich style. So, and um, recently I, I graduated from American University in uh, Hungary, uh, where I live now. And it was like totally different new world. The way how feedback should be delivered, it, it's, it's totally different from used to that. To give uh, something useful for a person, not just to purely to criticize, but also to put it in a way so you get some inspiration and you're not uh, going to give up on your ideas and so on. Or maybe I was like with a professor that got not all American professors. <laughs> That's good. And you mentioned something, you said sandwich. What do you mean by sandwich? Uh, we used to call it in here in school that it is a sandwich, like you put a positive note, you start. Oh, I think we've lost Oljan. Yeah, Oljan got a problem with the internet. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll come back to her once she's back with us. Um, yeah, I hope. Does anyone else, is anyone else familiar with this idea of sandwich? Yes, Igerim? No, that's not what you wanted to talk about. <laughs> but okay, well, I'll come back to you then. Um, Dari, yes? Yeah. Uh, yes, I heard about this uh, method. Uh, I, I mean, uh, when I saw uh, some TV series, maybe, or something, uh, they told that um, a, good, um, uh, a good boss uh, should give uh, a good, uh, you know, uh, feedback. Uh, it, it's called uh, like a sandwich. Uh, uh, first, you give uh, something positive. Then you should say what don't uh, what you don't like uh, in uh, in the work of um, uh, of that fellow, and then you should uh, end with a good positive again. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Do any of you use the sandwich in everyday life? Uh, well, uh, yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> when I work with my, um, you know, students um, from school, uh, uh, I use this method and it works very well. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Igram, you wanted to say something else. Do you want to jump in now? Ooh. We can't hear you. Okay. It might be still the neighbors from yesterday. No, <laughs> okay. Okay, any other thoughts on sort of differences in how to give each other feedback or give each other sort of comments on, on work or, or writing that you've noticed? I can just add that uh, it's really hard to find people who give you construct not bias feedback. Uh, they usually um, can say something positive about your personality, but not uh, about your work exactly, or um, or in like vice versa, some say something negative about your personality, not about your work. So um, it is really hard to find people who are um, like. I don't know, benevolent spectators. They just see um, the objective um, like situation and uh, can give you valuable insights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point of that, making that distinction between the work, uh, you know, the actual piece of text and um, the person who produced it. Um, and that's something that I think, you know, really takes practice, um, not just for the people giving feedback, but also for the writer himself, right? Like. Sometimes, you know, it's happened to me as well, where I've, I've put up, um, you know, I've shared a short story I thought was terrific. And, uh, you know, someone, people found it, you know, uh, less than terrific. And, it, you know, it, it, it was difficult for me to say, oh, what they're criticizing isn't me, it's, it's to be the work I did. 
that I showed them, right? Um, and that's sort of a constant practice that we have to have to do. Um, so I'm interested also, you know, for instance, I've noticed that here, right now I live in France, and um, this assumption that I was talking about, the one that this idea that writers grow through feedback, it's not necessarily something that people believe here in France. Um, so here, you know, there's such a thing as like a school for writers. You wouldn't, you would think that was quite strange for, you know, someone to go to a school to try and become a better poet or to try and become a better novelist. Um, you're sort of expected to be in your own corner, um, work in isolation until you become, you know, the next JK Rowling, uh, pretty much. And you might have a mentor, maybe like one writer who's, who's maybe a little bit more uh, experienced than you are, uh, but that's about it. So I'm curious to hear you talk about, you know, in your own countries and cultures, like how people think, um, such a thing as a school for writers where you are. The fact that um, you, um, well, I speak for Uzbekistan, so, mm -hmm. so you never, um, there, uh, there are no uh, universities for creative writing or uh, you, you cannot find any courses to uh, where you can go and learn these skills. And that already speaks for itself. So um, uh, people think, uh, they rather think that uh, you are, a born a poet or you cannot learn it or you cannot improve so mm -hmm. I think <laughs> and um, also the the translation literary translation it's uh, very underdeveloped and and, and people become uh, themselves so, so it's like blind man and fire it looking it's a it's a, per, a constant uh, growth um, on your own so it, you cannot go and uh, study it uh, as a like uh, you know it from europe or elsewhere in the mm -hmm. world right may i uh, may I add um, you know, uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, situation uh, is the same, I can say, yeah. Uh, we don't have uh, such workshops or, um, you know, uh, places where you can learn uh, writing. Uh, but um, as far as we're uh, living in a... Um, uh, in an internet, uh, uh, I mean, century. <laughs> so you can uh, take different courses um, uh, from uh, Russia, uh, I mean, um, um, from abroad. Um, when I first started to write um, uh, books, I was advised that uh, I should take some uh, courses and uh, I found uh, some interesting courses on Coursera.org uh, and uh, different other uh, resources where uh, I found uh, an interesting, um, you know, writing, creative writing courses. And uh, um, I know that uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, some uh, options that you can choose. So, um, uh, what about me? Uh, I'm trying to um, give uh, some uh, courses to Kazakh, uh, I mean, local Kazakhstani children, uh, so they can learn writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So you're kind of, you're, you're, you're seeing a need and you're trying to sort of fill that need a little bit as well. Right. Uh, there are a lot of people who want to um, learn uh, how to write, um, you know, um, some uh, fairy tales, uh, different prose. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I think that um, uh, the, uh, there are a lot of people, uh, so we can uh, make something interesting. Uh, recently, I started a uh, um, literature project with Hungary. Uh, they are um, uh, 
they um, suggested us to make some, um, you know, bilateral project uh, to uh, develop um, uh, literature for uh, children literature. And uh, so uh, we are now learning <laughs> from from the ex uh, I mean uh, learning the experience of um, international you know um, collaboration. So I think that uh, it is a good uh, experience for our writers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm happy that we have such an opportunity uh, like this uh, to attend workshops. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, just Igrim is back. I saw. Um, so is Uljan. I just wanted to cycle back to you guys. Uh, Uljan, you were saying something and then uh, you got cut. Was was there anything you wanted to add or were? Uh, no, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. My internet is like <laughs> it's not good today. That's okay. It. Thank you. And I agree, I just wanted to give you a chance if there was, because you were muted and then you wanted to say something. Um, I think that uh, you basically covered it. I just wanted to share that I had, my working career started in the international company with, of course, a very fruitful culture of feedback, of constructive feedback. And then I uh, found myself in a local publishing house where and i also work a lot with uh, creative people and i know that there is a problem uh not only in giving feedback but also in receiving feedback because uh you know all my comments though i'm pretty sure that i i've learned my constructive feedback skills um, they are like um, per perceived as the personal threat most of the time mm. or like uh, yeah like like uh, as if I'm trying to undermine the person uh, a person's personality or the value of his or her identity or something like that not just his work mm -hmm. though but uh, I also noticed that as um, as I work with artists, for example, and I uh, start giving this feedback and I discuss every note with them very carefully, uh, they start to perceive it differently. So it works. Okay, yeah, so there's a learning curve. That's interesting, yeah. that's sort of what Miriam was also saying of, of sort of making a distinction between the work and, and the person yeah. um, and how hard that is. Yeah, um, so, uh, one thing I also wanted to ask you guys, what do you think is the difference then between advice and feedback? Um, if you had to sort of uh, break it down for someone. I think for feedback, you just reflect on something. And uh, for advice, you are just giving some instructions. Mm -hmm. To me, this is the main difference. Okay, yeah. Anyone else have thoughts on that or want to add to what Igram just said? So advice, I mean, for, I think it's very much what you were saying. It's sort of this idea that it's another way of saying, here's what I would do if I were you, or uh, here's, the so here's a solution that I'm offering you, right? Whereas feedback is, um, it's going to be more like, mm, uh, maybe I'm not, I'm, I'm not even sure why, but this paragraph is where um, I found myself bored. <laughs> or, you know, uh, or you might say, um, it's, it's much more sort of uh, more like identifying the issue and, you know, where things aren't, aren't working well and less about offering up potential solutions. Um, so it might be the difference between, say, also like a, a life coach, which is something that in the US is very uh, sort of increasingly common, um, and like a guru. Uh, so someone who actually tells you this is how to live your life versus, um, you know, here are, some, here are some ways in which you can think about your life, right? Um, and, you know, a, a story to illustrate that is that I have a novelist friend who um, makes his wife or asks his wife to read all of his novels. And, um, you know, she often falls asleep uh, while reading them. And he, you know, really incorporates that as feedback in the sense that he'll go and look <laughs> what page um, she was on when she fell asleep. And he'll know that maybe that's somewhere that, you know, he needs to rework that page because clearly um, something was happening there that allowed her to fall asleep. So that's kind of a, just a, a, an anecdote to imagine the difference there. 
So I thought maybe um, we can jump right in and try and do a little bit of feedback ourselves. Um, so I wanted to uh, try bring you sort of um, this three-step method that I learned at Iowa that is something that the director of the program there, Lan Samantha Chang, sort of follows. Um, and you know, it's, it's entirely up to you to decide whether this is useful to you or not. Um, I'm just gonna sort of give you the tools so that you can, um, you know, have it in your toolbox. Um, so the three-step process is basically first, um, you describe whatever it is, so the, the piece of writing in neutral terms um, and as precisely as possible. Then step two, is to um, ask yourself, what is the most memorable aspect of this piece of writing? You know, if you were to um, only remember one thing about it uh, 50 years from now, what would that be? And then the third step is, you know, given what we know about it and having described it, how can it be um, the ideal version of itself? Um, and this is a very wordy way of saying, how can it improve? Um, the way I'm saying it slightly differently is because, um, for instance, if you're writing a science fiction novel in which you have, or like a fantasy novel in which you have trolls and fairies, um, and someone for this phase number three is like, oh, well, I think you should get rid of the trolls and the fairies. Um, you know, it's, you're, they're not taking into account the fact that you've set out to create a project that is that will include trolls and fish, if that makes sense, right? So this is why the first step and the third step are kind of connected. So just to give us like a quick um, warm up, I thought we could apply this method to um, the tool that we're all using right now, which is Zoom. So um, what we can start off with is saying, okay, uh, we're just gonna just describe Zoom in neutral terms. Um, does anyone wanna give it a shot? Just describe what it is. It is basically an internet platform that allows you to hold different meetings uh, online and see each other, have some interaction between you, among you, among the speakers and members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Thank you. And um, what what is Zoom's intention? What does it intend to do? I think it's just a platform for people uh, to um, like to make meetups. <laughs> so uh, it must not be only uh, business meetups, but uh, personal or, you know, uh, you can uh, meet with your friends, with your family um members uh, so uh it's just a good platform to meet with people mm -hmm. great so there's it's a it's an online platform that is for business but not only also social uh events right okay anything else we want to add to just the sort of neutral description which makes communication happen between people yes yeah online <laughs> online exactly so it's it's a, it's a tool we're using when we can't maybe communicate face to face, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that was round one, right? Now round two, what's the most memorable aspect of Zoom? It saved us during quarantine because it allowed uh, people all over the world um, to connect with uh, your teachers, your coworkers, um, like various, various different people, because you can, you couldn't meet them face to face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good one. And and maybe I don't know if this is what you were suggesting here, but we might have a some, sort of a fond place in our hearts for Zoom forevermore because of this. <laughs> yes. Uh, my nickname is Zuma. <laughs> That's what colleagues <laughs> laugh at me. They said that you, you invented. <laughs> this too. <laughs> okay. Okay. So for you, that's that's the most memorable aspect is that it's very close to your name. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? I, I, I hate it. I really hated Zoom 
uh, during quarantine times because my three children had, uh, well, uh, school, Zoom, uh, so lessons, and the internet connection was really bad. So that's why I have bad memories okay. <laughs> of that time. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Gulnas. So you're already going into phase three. You're going to round three, which is um, how can it be improved? Um, <laughs> but yes. Um, any other, anyone else have comments on just the round two, the sort of most memorable aspect? Um, yeah. For me, the most memorable aspect is uh, Zoom let me be graduated from the university. So I had my first session uh, wow. online. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations for graduating. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I have never um, heard about Zoom uh, previously. Uh, I mean, before uh, that uh, quarantine time. So uh, now I um, have an association um, that uh, Zoom uh, is like, uh, you know, um, something new that uh, people uh, found for the, themselves this year. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm glad that we can connect uh, like in that style. Um, and uh, I found it very comfortable for, for me, <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, you're saying it's, it's surprising. It, it has this pretty dramatic uh, story of being completely unknown to becoming completely widespread, right? right. In very few months. Okay. So now going, uh, jumping off of what Gulnos was saying, um, how, you know, what, if you had one suggestion for Zoom, uh, what would it be to improve based on how we just described it? Oh, yes, I have one suggestion. I thought that it would be really great if Zoom could use less computer or internet resources so that each user could adjust it, even with weak, weak connection, something like lower quality, lower quality of speed and well, of sound and video, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Imrat. Uh, Zoom doesn't allow people to get feedbacks when the lecturer gives lectures. <laughs> I mean, when you interact personally, you get feedbacks from people. Mm -hmm. But but when you're having Zoom meetings, sometimes you don't get feedbacks from people, like in, in live interaction. And maybe Zoom should add some live um, feedbacks so that it's not be, it will not be very difficult for a lecturer to give lectures to others. Mm -hmm. And how, how could it do that? Like, okay, would it be like that icon right there that I gave just posted? Like mm -hmm. clapping? Is that what you have in mind? <laughs> okay. okay, great. So if this were an actual workshop and Zoom were um, here with us, what we would then do is hand it over to Zoom and say, Zoom, do you have any questions? And at this point, Zoom could actually, you know, um, you know try and get some more specific information. Like for instance, they could ask follow-up questions about what we just said. Okay, so this was kind of an absurd exercise, uh, mm -hmm. but it's possible that Zoom is listening to us right now. Um, mm -hmm. And so they got some feedback for free. Um, Maybe some creative design for, uh, for, for every age group, maybe for children more, um, so more, more interaction and uh, maybe um, other shapes uh, for, for the video. Oh, I don't know, just because uh, kids get really bored during Zoom sessions mm -hmm. and they, can, they cannot take it anymore. So yeah. maybe if they, if they would uh, change the interface and the appearance of video, um, yeah. maybe that would make Zoom more, <laughs> um, how do you say it? Um, more attractive. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think what you're raising here, if we were to translate it into sort of literary terms, is the audience. You're saying, you know, who is Zoom's audience? And until now, it was an adult audience mm -hmm. and uh, or readership. Uh, yeah. and increasingly, it's actually becoming a, a broader yeah. range. And so maybe it needs to adapt for those different types yeah. of readers. It's it's getting interesting when uh, we are discussing about this. Um, every time it, 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 this um, green 
a frame jumps uh, to the person who was talking right now. And I would make it more magic-like for children. If someone appears, it's boosh, and uh, on your um, um, computer, you see some bubbles or some, I don't know, just <laughs> more interaction. <laughs> cool, cool idea, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for participating in that exercise. Um, now I think we're going to sort of try and apply the same steps, but to an actual piece of writing. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and here we go. Okay. That was this. Oh, right, and this, these were just my notes from, I think I would mention that. Okay, so here we have um, a tiny, tiny short story um, that uh, you could call flash fiction um, by a writer I really like called Lydia Davis, who I mentioned yesterday. Um, she's the writer who keeps a notebook uh, beside her at all times. Um, and actually, I was thinking of you, Zare, because you mentioned that you get inspiration from your dreams. And she's actually someone who writes uh, a lot um, based on her dreams. So she'll have short stories that are actually her dreams. And I don't know if, you, can you also see me in, in video right now? Yes. Yes, okay. So here's, this is the book. I'm just gonna hold it up um, for you to see that is that this um, little story comes from. Okay, would anyone like to read um, the story out loud for us? Yep. Please go ahead. Shall I? The girl wrote a story, but how much better it would be if you wrote, uh, sorry, I don't see the, this part of. If you wrote a novel. Yep. The girl wrote a story, but how much better it would be if you wrote a novel, said her mother. The girl built a dollhouse, but how much better if it were a real house, her mother said. The girl made a small pillow for her father, but wouldn't be a quilt more practical, said her mother. The girl dug a small hole in the garden, but how much better if you dug a large hole, said her mother. The girl dug a large hole and went to sleep in it, but how much better if you slept forever, said her mother. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, so... Um, Let's start off by doing um, sort of the first round, just describing. Does anyone wanna um, jump out? I, I think I can't really see everyone. So I'm afraid you're just gonna have to, you know, start talking. So round number one, what's happening here? What is this? I think it's um, a story about uh, a girl and her mother uh, who expects uh, more than the girl does. Like, that, that's it. <laughs> okay, yes. So that was, so there you're interpreting a little bit about what, what we have here, yes. So you're saying this is about um, a girl whose mother always expects more from her, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like, I'm oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead, Ayana. Yeah, I wanted to try to. So I think uh, this is uh, the flashback story of a girl. And here she uh, writes about her relationship with her mother and includes the examples of how she, her mother reacts to her initiatives and actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're also there. So, so you're, you're going into interpretation there as well, yes. Okay, and if we were to just take a step back and say, okay, let's just describe this without necessarily interpreting it, what would you say? How would you describe it? The story is constructed in a way that uh, an action from a girl gets a reaction from, from her mother. And the uh, extent of the actions uh, grows uh, gradually from, uh, from sentence to sentence. Uh, and the final sentence is uh, like climactic, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. That's With great. A suge suggestion to sleep for the girl to sleep forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So, Igrim, there, um, what what Igrim just did is you're talking about like all this pe the structure that the story has, right? Where you get an action and a reaction, an action and a reaction, right? 
Anything else just in terms of describing um, this tiny piece of writing? Okay. Um, so, you know, another thing that, you know, we would say in this first round is, well, this is a standalone piece, right? It's a short story. It's not, it's not an excerpt from something larger. It's supposed to just exist on its own. Um, another thing that you could say is that, you know, the way it's written, um, it's a little bit like a fairy tale. There's something about it that has like a fable-like quality, right? The girl said, said her mother. The girl did this, said her mother, right? And, and so that's also just a way of situating it um, in terms of style, kind of, you know? Okay, anything to add? And, and interpretation as the, the first two people who spoke is very good as well, because um, that is also sometimes where we disagree. Um, but I just kind of wanted to make sure that we're also doing the very basic describing, which many of you might think, oh, this is um, too basic, but you'd be surprised by um, how often we don't agree on these basic descriptors. Um, okay, so round two. What's the most memorable aspect for you about this? What jumps out at you? I think that the most member, memorable um, place uh, of this short story is the ending. It is uh, some unexpectedly changed, <laughs> you know, uh, from just uh, uh, being um, uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, from being uh, like um, uh, mother and um, uh, like being critical uh, to um, to like uh, cursing, or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so um, the uh, the end uh, changed uh, all the um, motives. I mean, all the um, it, it is like a dramatic ending. So I, I don't know why uh, it is changed, but uh, I think that it is the most memorable place. Yeah. Great, thank you. Anyone else want to add? Yes, I totally agree with Zauri. And I think that, um, as you mentioned before, uh, we like somewhat starting uh, with a fairy tale and then like some tale. And then um, we have a really dynamic stories because we have like, it looks like flashbacks uh, from the movie. And we have very um, interesting culmination, like open ending that uh, makes us um, stop and just think about um, about the text that we have read. So I think uh, it leaves a very, very strong feeling that you want to uh, dig uh, deeper into the story and understand maybe more, understand why was her mother such a demanding person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you, Miriam. Yes, I mean the the ending resonates with the um, main story, the, with the main body of the story. So, uh, that 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 is why it must be memorable. Okay. Right. To me, the most memorable thing is um, how condensed the story is and how well it's, it illustrates the conflict between the. Uh, unsatisfied mother and a striving, uh, and a daughter striving for satisfaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm amazed by uh, how, how short the story is and yeah, yeah, what, conf what conflict it portrays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Great, so now I think we can move on to round three. Um, so based on all the things we just said about the story, um, how could we help Ludia Davis improve it? Um, if she were around. Maybe add more, uh, I don't know, portrait, give a portrait for a mother, maybe her background or her talk with her mother. I don't know. 
So uh, you're saying add more. Why would you want her to add more? What is it? Uh, just to understand uh, the mother, why she's behaving that way. Oh, maybe yeah. her own feelings and maybe it is what she inherited from the relationship with her mother or some other circumstances in life. So you're, yeah, what you're saying is you're, you're curious about, you know, why the mother is acting this way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, good point. Anyone else, else have ideas? Well, I would... I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Camilla. You were first. Oh. Camila, I think you're on mute. I'm sorry. There you sorry. go. Yeah, in the beginning, uh, maybe um, it would be nice to add some uh, something that uh, her mother said about her, like some good things about the girl to make it more like, uh, to make the contrast uh, even more, I don't know how to say it. I'm sure, I'm sorry, like um, to make it more, uh, different, the, the beginning and the ending. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like this. I'm not sure. <laughs> so you'd like you'd like to see more of a transformation happen, is yeah, what, yeah. Sort of what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Guljan, you had something to say. Well, no? Yes. Uh, um, oh, sorry. May I? Yeah. Well, um, I would. Uh, say to Lydia to change the ending instead of writing uh, but how much better if you slept forever uh, maybe just how much better if you stayed awake all the time ah, interesting so and why are you suggesting like that? that because well um, if you look at the story um, it's just evolving um, every time the mother tries to make a better person, uh, that her girl will be a better person and has achieves more in, the, in her life. And the ending is a bit unusual that if you slept forever. So sleep, as for me, is, it means death. So um, the mother wouldn't want it. And, and I would write just, uh, I would say that uh, how much better if you never slept something because uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, it isn't feeling. what you're saying. You feel like from what I'm hearing, what you're saying is you think it's odd that a mother would want her daughter yes. to sleep yes. forever. No matter how toxic the mother can be, it's uh, well, a bit unusual that uh, she wants her daughter to die. Uh -huh. So that's like a part of the story that you don't quite believe would happen yeah. that way. I think, um, well, in uh, in the beginning, uh, she wants that uh, she becomes a better, achieves more in life, and then um, the end, it doesn't match mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ending. Yeah. yeah, interesting point. Yeah. So, so it's really... Um, Okay, so see what, what right now what we just did, right? Um, is that you suggested a change, right? And what you were doing there is you were offering up a solution. Mm -hmm. And what I did when I asked you some questions there was I was trying to dig a little bit to understand what is making you give the solution. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so often when, when uh, you hear someone giving you solutions in related to your writing, what's helpful for you to know as a writer is what's underneath that solution? Like, why are you suggesting that change? Because the writer might not end up making that specific change that you want or that has been suggested, but, but it will help them understand maybe what the issue is, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm telling that the beginning, uh, so the mother wants uh, that um, the girl achieves more. Right. Yeah, and uh, gets, uh, gets a better person or I don't know yeah and then at the end um she wants that she dies yeah and it's a strange shift there it's yeah just, yeah 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 definitely uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. great okay so um I think that's sort of 
we've just run through those three rounds and congratulations, we sort of managed to hold our first workshop. Um, and now we're going to, so I'm gonna stop the screen share and um, hello everyone again. And what I'm gonna suggest is that we do this with um, you know, a member of this group now. So if anyone has something that they're ready to share with us, then um, maybe we can ask, ask for a volunteer now. Um, yes, I agree. Okay. Do you have something that's um, sort of, you think uh, under 500 words that we can read now? Yeah. Okay. I, I wrote something um, specifically for today. So. Great. <laughs> Um, and I also wanted to, to try yeah, and be in this process, not as the provider of the feedback, but uh, as the one that receives it. Okay, super. Um, I'm going to ask you to uh, maybe drop in, if you can, drop the text into the chat so that we can all read along as you read it out loud. And would someone like to try and be uh, the moderator? to sort of take us through the three rounds, like what I just did. Because, right? anyone? <laughs> okay, well, um, unless someone wants to jump in, I'm gonna do it one more time. And then uh, in the 15 minutes we have left, I'm gonna ask you guys to sort of uh, group together and then sort of do it together, okay? Right. I will. Uh, I will send a link to my Google Drive, uh, and it's oh. public because uh, the piece doesn't uh, get into this uh, okay. window. Okay. Okay. I guess you can share the screen, or or, or I can share the screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Can you do this? Oh, no. I, I, I do not have the right to do that. Коллеги, вы не можете предоставлять доступ к своему экрану. Да, то есть... Я поняла. Just a second. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Okay. Okay, so it worked for me. Okay. Got it. Does anyone have a problem with the file? No? Okay. My um I think you've just selected all the text. So for me it's coming up like a uh, high. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, excellent. So we're, we're, we're ready to go, if you're ready to, to read it out loud for us. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a bit scary. <laughs> okay, strange noise pulled me out of a beautiful dream. There I was on a bed in the center of my room, straight uh, from a hot embrace of a Nepal-like looking man. I could still feel his hands at the top of my back. I listened to the silence once again, nothing happened. I turned over to the other side, begging gods of sleep to bring me to the Italian shore once again. Squeak, squeak, I heard again as I was dr drifting towards the na half naked Apollo with my eyes closed. A tiny spot of a, of a shadow appeared on the left wall by the window. Squeak, squeak, am I going nuts? A quick thought crossed my mind as I sat on the bed. Obviously, my sweet dream vanished into the void. The spot grew bigger and then crossed the room by the wall even quicker. It now stopped right, now, uh, right by, the wind, uh, by the mirror opposite to my door, slowly crawling to the safe darkness of, of a makeup table underneath it. Ah, I shout as if someone could hear me. Almost silent in the beginning, my voice almost reached uh, ultrasound. Uh, I could feel my throat vibrate. It was the right moment to remember that light switch was just beside the bed. I pushed it. Catching my breath, I, I saw a small gray tail un, uh, from under the window, or oh, the mirror. Squeak, squeak. 
okay, at, at, le at least it's not paranormal, I thought. Oh my God, it's still a mouse, a smallish fur furry monster. It reached the door almost instantly. I slowly crawled out of the bed as if this little creature could turn into ugly big monster and eat me alive. I saw no signs of it in front of the door. I made two steps when I imagined for a second how someone, uh, some uh, unknown observer might have reacted to, to a picture of me in my sleepy t-shirt, making tiny steps towards the bedroom door. The thought might, made me burst into laughter. Laughing and terrified at the same time, I decided that I need a weapon to fight a mouse. As I turned my head around and saw absolutely nothing but my favorite tanga skirt left on the bedside stand after last night's milonga. Uh, I tried to weigh the sacrifice versus benefit in my sleepy mind. I love the skirt and how it whirled when I danced. Happy memories. Alas, something needed to be done. Of course, should it be past 9 a.m., I, I would have noticed a large wardrobe right beside me, but nothing is, is the same at three in the morning. Squeak, squeak, my arm reached, uh, reacted faster than my brain uh, as the skirt flew above my head towards the door. I must have thought that the magical power of beautiful fabric would turn the mouse into a unicorn. Again, nothing is logical at three in the morning. Only then I realized that this little bastard was in another room and I can close the door to have remainder, a remainder of whatever sleep was left. <laughs> Great, thank you, Agarim. Uh, sorry, I'm not the greatest reader. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, let's see, who would like to describe what we just read, what we just heard? We heard the story of Agirim about her uh, nightmare, how she met a little mouse and how she fight it. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> yes. Anyone want to add to that? Thank you, Zimrat. It's a story with a nice sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting a little bit into the round two here, but yes. So you notice that there's humor in there, yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else, just sort of describing uh, what we had? Um, me? Uh, I think the story um, written in a very, uh, you know, um, clear, uh, understandable language, uh, and uh, it has a lot of uh, descriptions, uh, thoughts. Uh, it has a good, um, you know, um, like a monologues uh, and uh, it describes the um, uh, internal you know like um, feelings uh, at uh, like uh, uh, why why people um, uh, re react uh, another at three in the morning uh, than uh, at nine a.m. so <laughs> Uh, we can see uh, the difference in um, uh, behavior of that uh, of that character. Uh, I mean, of the um, or maybe of the uh, of uh, about uh, this person uh, who is reacting, and um, uh, I can see uh, that uh, it is a good uh, short story uh, with the um, uh, interesting, uh, you know, catching um, beginning. Uh, no, the... Sorry, I'm going to stop you there because you're going into round two, which is great. But I just want to give people a chance to to do the sort of neutral describing before we jump in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else want to add something just to the round one description uh, i want to try yeah so i think this is the story about i give one of like one of the night in her life uh when she was um woken up by the ma by the mouse and uh what she did uh and yeah what she did uh during her encounter with the mouse 
Yes, yes, okay. Um, and and so it's interesting because I think, so I've heard two people refer to this as Eigerim. And I would say, for instance, if I were to describe this, I'd be like, you know, I don't know whether this is nonfiction or fiction. Uh, you know, this is a character who is speaking, um, you know, uh, sort of it's a monologue, as you were saying, Zaure, right? Um, they're speaking from their voice. Um, I'm going to assume it's a woman because there's a tango dress involved, but I don't really know that until we get sort of pretty far down in the text, right? Um, I would say it's, it's, a, it's a short piece of text that is made up of one scene. It's one continuous sort of, we're not going forward 20 years or anything like that. Um, and, you know, I would also say maybe, I think it's a standalone piece. I'm assuming it's not part of a longer work, but we don't really know that either. Um, but so, so these are just some elements that I would sort of throw out there and say, here are some questions we have. Uh, here, here are some of the conclusions we can draw based off of what we just read together, right? Like, I don't know, I don't know, I agree. I don't know whether she does tango. Um, so I can't assume that that's, that's her, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Zauri. You were just sort of taking us into round two and you said something about sort of, you were starting to talk about what, what you had sort of, what had struck you, what you found memorable about the piece. Uh, well, um, uh, what about the beginning? Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the most memorable part is Apollo like looking man. <laughs> yeah, then uh, something disturbs uh, the main character and um, uh, it makes us think about uh, what what is that? Is that a paranormal? Oh, you know something, or um, is that maybe um, uh, a bug? <laughs> so after um, after the um, uh, main uh, chapter, I mean the main part, um, uh, we found out that. Uh, it is a um, mouse, so uh, now we understand uh, why it was squeaking. <laughs> yeah, uh, so um, uh, what about the most memorable part? Yes, uh, it is a mouse and uh, uh, the scene when I uh, the main character decides uh, to throw uh, its uh, tango skirt, uh, uh, or what uh, it should be, uh, what uh, should be done uh, to, um, uh, like, uh, making yourself um, uh, in, um, uh, I mean. Uh, to, to separate yourself from that uh, from that monstrous uh, fury creature, <laughs> so I think that uh, that's the memorable uh, that's the most memorable part. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyone else want to jump in? I can just add that I really like this idea with Apollo and uh, Tango skirt. It was like little details, but they were so nice, and um, they made me like be more empathetic to the author. Umrat, you wanted to add something? I wanted to say that this text gives a lot of questions to you. That where is this Apollo-like man? <laughs> why he's not in it? Where, why did the mouse came in? <laughs> okay, yeah. There's sort of a, an entire world going on there that we just get a little sort of uh, glimpse of. Yeah. Uh, if I can add, probably the memorable thing for me was uh, the fact that how our brain works once we are sleepy, that it really reacts differently if it's 9 a.m. Uh, or if, if it is 3 a.m. So I, I like that, that sense of it, of a sleepy brain. Anyone else? The thing that I um, I wanted to sort of, uh, that I found memorable about this was also the, 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 the imagination of the narrator here. You know, we have 
Um, we have someone who's dreaming about an Apollo-like man, then imagining that a mouse is some kind of monster, then, you know, and, and we have a moment where the narrator starts laughing because of something that they imagined in their head, right? And so it, it shows us this character who really has a very vivid imagination and, and it makes us kind of um, immediately sort of fond of, of whoever's speaking because uh, we get almost like a glimpse of how their brain works. Um, and that was, that was well done. Um, we were able to do that in, in very short amount of time really. Okay, so now moving on to round three. So given what we've just sort of said about this piece, how we've described it, what can it do um, to improve? Any ideas? I think it would be nice if the Apollo-like man would appear suddenly. <laughs> I don't know why, but like maybe he could, um, mm, mm, I don't know, rescue her from that tiny monster. Great, okay, thank you, Camila. Any other ideas, observations? So some questions and, you know, when you're sort of thinking about this round three, okay, what, you know, what can we come up with that could be useful for Igram? There are a number of questions that you can ask yourself. For instance, you know, um, am I clear on where we are? Just the basic who, what, where, when of the story, right? You know, how, how um, confused am I at the beginning and how quickly am I able to orient myself, right? Um, another question would be, is this piece starting in the right place? Is it ending in the right place? Um, often in first drafts, we you know we start writing, and it turns out that uh, you know the beginning isn't really where we started writing. Right? Same with the ending. Um, there's uh, other questions like, for instance, um, you know the voice. How how much do we learn about this voice? Uh, this this person speaking. Are there more things we'd like to know about this voice? Um, things like that. Anyone else have thoughts for uh, round three? Well, um, a small thing to, uh, I would um... I would change the, that when the mouse is crossing uh, across the room, it, it had the shadow. And uh, if someone is sleeping, uh, I guess the lights are not on uh, and there is no shadow without light. <laughs> so I would change that bit. Thank you. That's great. So yeah, what you're uh, talking about there is sort of veracity, like how can we, you know, how much can we believe that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Igram to take home and think about? You know, you're right. Um, I think I have a, a um, suggestion about pacing. I think for me, I thought we, we had like a pretty um, sort of um, even pacing in the, uh, for most of the piece, you know, sort of we're beat by beat um, discovering things along with the speaker. And then the end to me feels like it ends quite quickly um, because, you know, we get the sense, we understand that the mouse is no longer in the room but it's almost like we get that information not at the same time as the speaker. You know what I mean? Like we have this line, only then I realized that this little bastard was in another room. Um, and it, it just felt a little bit fast because for me, we were working up to a climax. Uh, and, and also for me, that line is a little bit ambiguous. I didn't understand whether the mouse had always been in another room 
or has now moved to another room. Um, so it's something uh, that I just noticed that I got a little confused there at the ending. Okay, Any, and anyone wanna add something or? Okay, we're gonna hand it over to Igarim. Do you have any questions for us? I have like an enormous amount of gratitude for you to listen <laughs> uh, and to share your ideas. This is like invaluable for me. And I have come up with uh, several things that I would like to add uh, to the story. So uh, this is definitely useful. And uh, I see that this uh, structure is working very well. And I don't know, I just thank you for the experience. Okay. <laughs> I give mm -hmm. feedback so much and so often that, and I so rarely receive them, so okay. thank you. Well, glad, glad that you were, um, thank you for being sort of our sacrificial lamb, being our first, <laughs> our first person. Um, sacrificial lamb. <laughs> sacrificial, yeah. <laughs> We have another 15 so minutes left. So what I was gonna suggest is that we try and do two groups where you guys sort of re reproduce this process, but on your own sort of, uh, right? So I think we have, mm, we can do maybe two groups of four. Um, I, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, so there is no option to, uh, to switch groups by yourself so it can, this can do our technical support person or um, he, he can switch you I can and go for groups okay, okay. yeah <laughs> for two groups and uh, uh, the um, thing is that uh, we have to understand how long you've been in one group to switch you to another one and what guys are gonna do during your absence Ah, yes. So, well, I mean, the way we can also do this is I don't need to switch groups. It's okay. I think, I think you have the tools. So people have the tools they need in order to do this exercise on their own. I, it was just, you know, for me to be able to be there in case you had any like um, troubleshooting, but I think everyone's pretty autonomous. Um, so we can try and just run it uh, without me jumping in. Um, is that possible? Do we, do the people who aren't in groups, can we just stay on this call? Uh, I guess yes. Uh, and when I have to return to one, this one group, Should yeah. We? So people can return to the to the, to the main group. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll do that. If there are questions, then then I'll just be here. Okay. So yeah. they work uh, separately into groups during fifteen minutes, and after that, we will come back to this main group. Is it right? Yes. I mean, we're right now. We're sort of we've got I think ten minutes left. So. Okay. Um, I think it'll just be 10 minutes. So I'm just going to give quick instructions. The idea is one of you is going to be the timekeeper. Okay, so when, when you are in that group, you need to quickly decide who's the timekeeper. Um, one of you is going to be the moderator. Um, and that means that you're asking the sort of, you're going through the three rounds and you're making sure that you move through those three rounds fairly fast. And then uh, one person should be the volunteer to share uh, their writing and read it out loud. And ideally it wouldn't be longer than what Igrim just read, so one page maximum. Um, and if you have it, please share it with the rest of your group as sort of a screen share or by dropping it into the chat so that they can read along with it, okay? Is everyone sort of clear on what we're doing? Yes? Okay. Um, if you have any questions, just jump back into this main group and then we're gonna sort of debrief for like a minute um, before we end, okay? So please come back to the main thing before logging off, okay? All right, so Camila um, and Go Viral team, I'm handing it over to you for, to assign two groups. Okay, Ramil. Uh, yeah, I heard mm -hmm. 10 minutes, I'll do two zales. In one, Anna will be Anna, in the second, you'll be you, Camila. And the zales are 10 minutes. Да, и потом нам нужно опять вернуться. 
Да, по истечении этого времени вы автоматически вернетесь в основную сессию. А они могут ли в эту э, основную сессию скидывать какие-то вещи в чат или нет? А пока люди в залах, в сессионных залах, то есть они могут переписываться только друг с другом. Все понятно. Окей, хорошо. Все, я запускаю залы. Угу. Удачи. Okay, um, welcome back everyone. Um, it was such a pleasure. I got to be a fly on the wall for one of the groups and I wanted to congratulate you guys. Um, it was such a pleasure to hear you talking um, about Zari's piece. Uh, I hope things went all right in the other group. I realized that um, that was a ridiculously short amount of time to give you. So I apologize for putting you into a stressful position. <laughs> Um, ideally, we, we would have more time. So I just wanted to tell you that, so tomorrow we're going to be talking about what to do with this feedback that, you know, you go through the process of collecting. And to give you a little bit more feedback to sort of work with, I wanted to leave you with my email address and encourage you to send me whatever it is that you may have prepared for today. Um, and I will respond uh, and, you know, give, you know, go through these one, two, three steps uh, by writing. Um, so please feel free to send it my way. Uh, I'm going to drop it over here. Um, and I'll try and get that to you, um, you know, at some point before our workshop tomorrow so that you have time to look it over and then we can talk some more. Okay. Uh, sorry, Anna, what would be the deadline? Like, I don't have anything written which um, I would be able to share in English. Well, maybe before you, uh, before, um, uh, if I have it by tomorrow morning, um, that's fine. So before you go to bed, maybe? Does that work? Um, whenever, um, today, uh, up until like midnight or something. And then when I wake up, I'll be able to read everything and, and give you and prepare notes. Yeah. Thank you for your context. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Bye. Thank you.